let's begin uh, good afternoon everyone i welcome all of you to yet another webinar by relabs uh, today's topic is extremely relevant and important and uh, we hope that you also find all the information that you're looking for we are going to be discussing medical and health insurance today um, how to choose what to choose why to choose everything will be discussed and i really hope that you enjoy today's webinar we have with us Ms. Sushma Jetmalani, who has a vast experience on this subject. She has had uh, uh, experience of over 15 years in the financial field. And today she'll be educating us about this topic. Welcome, Sushma. Thank you, Saloni. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, this topic is actually quite common when we speak about it. But when you actually go to check out videos or whatever, a lot of times it is associated with more like maybe you should buy this product or maybe you should buy that product rather than making a person understand why and how you can choose. So that's the reason for us doing that. I wanted to thank you, Saloni, and I wanted to thank you, Relabs, for giving me this opportunity to do this. Uh, topic. So, can we start? Yes, we can start. Yeah. So, um, medical health insurance, uh, there are various reasons why we need it. Also, the fact that it's, it's, uh, it's something where a lot of people are actually going on just ye mere agent ne bola to le lo. I'm telling you this is the maximum that I've seen happening. And being in the financial field, it's only the agent who recommends you what you are supposed to buy. Now, because we all are either working or we are busy or we feel that, okay, we have to have insurance, so just let's go with the agent. We actually never give proper thought to the fact that this is something that we need to actually check on. So this webinar is basically to just tell you in short that how you can choose. Because there is some criteria which you also need and God forbid, if you need that medical insurance, you know, you want that insurance at that particular time, you may realize that, oh my God, there are so many clauses to it. There are so many terms and conditions to it, which my agent never told me. So it, le it, it is actually up to you to read about it. But sometimes we feel that, oh my God, we have to go through so much. We have to read so much. So there are a few points which can help you actually decide on a good medical or health insurance, which is good for you and your family. So some of the things, okay, first of all, we talk about medical insurance. So everybody says, you are rising costs. I literally hear this, it's very easy to say it, but it's very difficult to pay up. And I have seen people struggle with medical bills. So until unless you have a dedicated fund, which is only for medical expenses for future, then you need medical insurance. Because unfortunately, today lifestyle diseases are very much. So first of all, why do we need medical insurance? Financial protection. Removing that kind of amount is very difficult. Even for people who are able to afford, sometimes they don't have the liquidity. In case there's an emergency, in case there is something which comes up and you want to go to a hospital, you know you are going to spend. Even the simple medical tests nowadays goes into 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. Of course, it gives you access to quality care. So people who cannot afford may have to go
go to a place where they may feel that the quality care is not there, but we have to because we don't have a choice. Also, preventive care. So there are some medical health insurance policies where you can actually have tests to see that everything is okay with you, like an annual health checkup. So you have a full body checkup, which is covered under some health insurance plans. Chronic illness, something which is chronic and then you feel that, oh my God, this may not be covered in my insurance. You got to check that. Transfer of risk. Obviously, now the transfer of all the risk comes on to your insurer. So that is something which helps you. And emergency coverage. God forbid an accident, something comes up in the report. There's an emergency procedure. And lastly, it gives you peace of mind. I mean, we all are aware of the fact that if we are covered by medical insurance, we at least know that if there is no problem on me, then my medical insurance will not cover anything at least in 80-90% to cover it. Sometimes it is absolutely 100% or you are not worried at all. So these are just some of the reasons that I gave you, which I think everybody will agree to. So coming on to the next thing, we always wonder what do we check in our health insurance? Okay. So some of the things that you may check is your medical checkup. Okay. Because uh, some may allow only hospitalization. Some may allow only medical checkup benefits. Then which tests are allowed? Like investigative, like as I said, okay, let's investigate whether I have so and so, so and so something. Will that cover my health insurance cover? The ambulance. Some medical insurances may not have that. So you got to check that. Pre and post hospitalization expenses. Like for example, before I go for a surgery, I need to get a few tests done. Are those covered? And when I come back from the hospital, are those covered too? Like for the next maybe three months, are all my regular checkups covered? Are my medicines covered? Are my tests covered? This you have to check because trust me, these are also expenses which can come to a good amount. Then maternity cover benefits. Now, this could be something in like your, maybe your company giving you. So you may check, okay, now if you are of that age where you feel that, you know, I would require this, then yes, if it covers that. Your daily allowance, how much is the daily allowance limit? Add on like critical in illness means is some of the critical illnesses covered? You got to check that. And also cover for procedures that take less than a day. That means you don't need to get yourself hospitalized, but you still need to go to the hospital for like maybe two or three hours and recover into or maybe go in the morning, come back in the evening. So you're not staying overnight. But does it cover those illnesses? So these are some of the things that you can actually check out. And I'll Slowly, slowly, we'll come to like individual plans, group plans. But this is something that at least you should check. These are basics. Coming on to, okay, so key factors. What does your insurance cover? Okay, so is it 5 lakhs? Is it 10 lakhs? Is it, so, so for example, there are many insurance policies which will say, okay, this is the amount. Within one year, you can utilize this much. So in case you need to be hospitalized again, God forbid, and there may be extra expenses, your insurance will cover only that amount. Then, of course, your own medical history. What your past medical history has been, the insurance cover will also check that. Then, of course, 
the hospitals, what kind of hospitals are covered in that health insurance plan and the sum insured, how much will be the sum that is insured. Some of the things for you to think about. Now, how do, okay, so I've told you what to do, what to think, but how do we choose? So on our next slide, first of all, we have to think about is the some amount adequate. For example, I am an individual. So I have kept a plan of maybe 5 lakhs for myself. But as I age, I may need which is a better plan with more coverage. If I am young and I have a family a young family, maybe like I am 30 years old, my wife is maybe 30 again, I have two small kids, maybe 5 lakh is good to start with. So that is a family thing. So what happens is slowly, slowly, you got to understand. So then we go to the right coverage. You're talking about a group plan, you're talking about a family plan, you're talking about individual then what is the waiting period? There are actually some health insurance policies which have a waiting period. In case you must have seen these ads on TV where <laughs> I will share with you, you have that Munna Bhai and Circuit coming and saying that, you know, nowadays plans have changed. Nowadays there's no waiting period. This is all old times. You got to check all that. So you got to see whether there is, there is there's a waiting period before you can actually do, you know, get your sum in case you have an emergency or something. Then, of course, uh, the hospital coverage, each hospital coverage, how much is it? Extensive, how much? Then claim settlement ratio. I have to tell you this. This is very, very important. When you are buying from any company or any um, insurance firm you gotta see their settlement ratio because that is very important in fact you should see also the fact that how quickly they actually settle your claims their claims that they get from their you know insured members so what happens is that shows that how good that insurance firm is and then, of course, always compare health, health plans because there'll be so many in your category. I know that will take extra time of yours, but trust me, it's worth it. It is worth it because of the fact that at, God forbid, the time that you really need their support, they shouldn't be saying, oh, we can do almost this. You didn't read this clause. Please compare then, you know, there is something like a uh, lifetime renewability benefit. Like, for example, some, um, like, for example, if you take like a medically, they give you renewability, uh, what you call benefit. They'll give you some bonus points, something. Some health insurance plans also give you some benefit on this. So please check that. And when we talk about sublimits and co-payment, now I will describe this to you. Sublimit. In sublimit, what happens is that some of the insurance companies will say that this is an extra limit coverage placed on certain medical expenses. So although those medical expenses are covered under the policy, there will be a limit to those also. So besides the limit on your uh, insured amount, there'll be a sub-limit on certain medical expenses. It could be anything from maybe some, some kind of injections, which are like very expensive, or maybe some kind of things which you require only for a particular illness. So please check that. Because what happens that you think that you are covered completely, but in those sub-clauses, there may be a sub-limit also. This is actually very, very important because a lot of people don't know about this. 
and then when you come to co-payment i'll tell you one thing that frankly speaking even i keep on learning new things co-payment is actually the percentage of claim that the insured that is you agree to pay from your pocket so it could be anywhere from 10 to 30 percent for example if you have a claim amount which is maybe 4 lakhs you may actually have to pay 40,000 to 1 lakh 20,000 from your own pocket. And the insurer, that is the company, will pay only the balance claim amount. And this is usually when it is under senior citizen health insurance policy. Now, this is very important when we as adults are taking insurance policies for our parents. So they are maybe 60 plus, And of course, we got to understand that they will not be covered completely. So these are some of the very important things that I feel. And also some of the things that I feel that we do not know about until unless we actually hear somebody say it. So coming to what kind of different insurance policies we have, we have a family floater. We have senior citizens. We have maternity and we have critical illness. So these are an individual. So these are just some different types of policies. Family floater could be compared to, you know, having your entire family under one plan. Senior citizens, of course, your parents, you know, who are above 60. Individual, yes. Me as an individual, if I'm unmarried and I have only myself to look after, then I would definitely need a medical insurance policy for myself. Critical illness, of course, if I have already had a critical illness or if there's a medical history of critical illnesses in my family, then yes. And maternity. So something which covers, a, you know, a, a plan which is basically starts from something like Pre, uh, from pregnancy to post-maternity expenses. So these are just some of the things. It depends on what your requirements are. So coming on to the next thing is a lot of people do not know the difference between MediClaim and health insurance or medical insurance. These are actually spoken as interchangeable. Mere paas MediClaim hai. Wo to pata hai. Aapko malam hai ki aapka kya kya covered hai mediclaim mein? Aur health insurance mein kya covered hai? So this is the difference that I just wanted to get to our audience. That mediclaim will cover your hospitalization cost. So hospitalization is a must. And mediclaim is more affordable. Because you are talking about there are no not much other things compared to health insurance. So when you talk about health insurance, you're talking about a complete health plan. So you, you may have those annual checkups. You may have those uh, diets that they may send you. They may have so many things that could be there, depending on the one that you take. It covers almost everything. Now, in MediClaim, the annual insurance is more the annual premium is more affordable, whereas in health insurance, the annual premium is more costly. Another thing, a premium increases with age. So when you're in your 25 and 30s, it's very low. The moment you cross 40, it goes up. The moment you cross 45 to 50, it goes up. So the premium keeps on rising. In health insurance, they will not give you a bonus claim. So if you've not utilized your medical mediclaim for a long time, they keep on giving you bonus points. In health insurance, that doesn't happen. And of course, compared to a mediclaim, the premium is quite expensive. But then it's covering a lot of things, which like for your day, your, you know, some of that health insurance could be your investigative reports, tests that you do, it could be also a day procedure, which may not be covered under the medical claim and it may be covered under the health insurance. 
So this is up to you what you would like to do. So coming on to our next thing, um, this is also a lot of things people will definitely be thinking about. So one, cashless. Actually, cashless is nowadays quite important. So yes, is, the, is your medical or MediClaim or health insurance giving you a cashless facility? So you just claim through the hospital. You don't have to pay up. You just have to, uh, you know, give your number, give your name to, uh, you know, to the, the medical insurance, inform them that, okay, I'm going through a surgery and stuff like that. The claim is done through the hospital. You are not there in between. It's, of course, less tedious paperwork because you don't have to keep all those bills and stuff like that. And there is no upfront payment. Because if you do not have a cashless facility, you have to pay first and then you have to claim it later. So you have to keep all the paperwork just to get your money from the insurance company. And this happens only after you've been hospitalized, whatever surgery takes place. And then you claim the paperwork and then they will reimburse the amount to you. So, of course, if you are talking about a very heavy kind of expenses, then removing that cash becomes difficult. And also, this is there should be a coordination between the hospital and insurer if there's a cashless facility. Uh, even otherwise, it may be necessary if your hus hospital is not part of the insurer's network arrangement so you will have to check all this even if you're buying a mediclaim you're buying a medical insurance or a health insurance these are things trust me when you go to ask or reimburse your money or cashless facility which hospitals are there please check these things we all speak about you know health insurance plan it's my health insurance. I I have to tell you this. I also spoke to my maid about it. And I told her that you require at least MediClaim. And she said yes. And she bought a MediClaim, although she's very, very young. Because they have a family. And they realized that once her daughter was hospitalized for something... And in four days, she had to spend 50,000 rupees, which for somebody like her is a very big cost. So I pushed her to at least do a MediClaim because this is something which will help her. And even an emergency, of course. So benefits of MediClaim or a health insurance plan, of course, they are much, much more cost effective and affordable. Okay, rising costs, yes, hospital costs, I have to tell you, have been going through the roof. So healthcare costs, it helps you with that. It, of course, safeguards your family. So in case, God forbid, something happens, at least you know that I have a particular amount insurance, that it helps with my family. So your family could be you, your wife, or your husband, and your kids, okay? Or it may be as simple as being like, okay, it's me, my brother, and my parents. It could be anything like that. But it definitely safeguards your family. It definitely offers tax benefits for people who like to claim. Trust me, it works because we do claim. And it pays out in lump sum when you have a life-threatening on diagnosis of a life-threatening disease. And I can tell you the life-threatening disease can unfortunately, but it is true, can actually not even go in lakhs, but it can go above a crore also. I have seen this. So I, as I said, right in the start, if you do not have a dedicated fund for medical expenses, then have a plan. 
or if you are extremely rich and you're not bothered about it, then it's up to you. So coming on to benefits of a family health insurance. Of course, we all love our family. So we want to keep them, you know, in a, in a proper state. We want to take care of them, you know. So now when we are talking about medical insurance for the full family, of course, it helps manage medical expenses easily. It can actually help you with high quality medical care. I mean, you may want that you have a good, we all basically want to go to a good hospital with good quality care when any of our family member is not well. The biggest benefit is, as I told you, considering the fact when you are very young, okay, you actually save money on the premium amount because you are healthy. You have a very young family. The Except for an emergency, you have, you have years before you really start catching up with age. So it also covers hospitalization expenses of lifestyle diseases. Now we all talk about lifestyle diseases and there are a lot. It could be anything from your heart care to cancer to, to a lot of things, frankly speaking. It provides you tax benefits, which I've already told you. It also gives you the option to add new family members by paying an additional premium amount. This is also something which is very beneficial for a family insurance. And if you are at that age, it will help you with maternity, maternity costs. If your company is not paying for that, at least as a family insurance, you have that. And also critical illness. God forbid if that is something that you have, your family has to go through. Really, God forbid. Coming on to, so what do we do? Some people tell me, I have an insurance which my company does for me. I don't need more. Great. If you don't need more, very nice. But please understand the difference. A group insurance plan will cost you less. But it cannot be customized according to, it cannot be made according to your individual preferences. On the other hand, an individual insurance will cost more, but it is better suited to your needs. Risk factor in a group insurance plans is, of course, you know, it's spread across to the entire group. Okay, so it increases the renewal premium. But here the risk factor depends on your medical and financial history. So it is basically you who decides. Group insurance plan is more comprehensive. So if, if your organization is giving you a group insurance plan, you will have to see whether that group insurance covers only you or it covers your family also. Mostly it covers your family up to a certain amount. And also it depends on what your, uh, should I say your designation, your authority and responsibility level and your salary level is in the organization. So it depends on where you stand in the organization hierarchy. So since it's a group plan, individual cannot select the type of policy. And they will not get a no-claim bonus. But here in the individual one, of course, you can, you have the freedom to choose your own policy. You get the no-claim bonus. So this is up to me to just show you what the difference is. The rest is actually up to you. There are a lot of people who have a group insurance plan but they also have a family insurance plan for their own family. So please check out what suits you. Then I just want to come to the next thing, which is factors that can, you know, actually 
affect your health insurance premium if you are a smoker because trust me it's very difficult to leave smoking i have seen people increase smoking never reduce it and completely closing it off hardly drinking of course if somebody is really person who is really drinking on a regular basis of course some professions with our like you know you are in a profession which is like which can be where you are fighting you know like where where it is dangerous every day for you some of the professions then of course i am talking about your medical history there may be you are if you are a diabetic okay if you have a pre preceding you have a pre medical history which actually shows that you may in future be hospitalized more god forbid but yes they consider that your family medical history trust me in your family if there are a lot of things which are happening you know they see your medical history of maybe your parents maybe your siblings so they know that certain diseases run in your family it's genetic then yes then of course young individuals who are less likely to be subject to diseases the premium is low because you're young you're healthy okay you are not going to be affected you're you're more like of a certain weight okay and we already spoke about individuals with extreme drinking habit if that's the case all these things are taken into fact uh, into account when your health insurance premium is being calculated lastly i just want to say that the steps to getting your health insurance claims reimbursed if you want a reimbursement the policy holder must be admitted to a hospital that is not already affiliated with the insurance company you will have to keep all your medical reports and invoices in the original form because you need to file that you need to get a discharge certificate from the hospital you will have to submit all your claim forms all your medical bills all your reports and all the necessary documents that your insurance company has listed in the policy some insurance like for example i know that if if my medi claim i am allowed 3 months before all the tests that i do is covered i know the hospitalization is covered all the tests are covered all the medicines are covered and also 3 months later all the three uh, all sorry my mistake all the three months whatever medical expenses that i do are covered so what i do is i cover i write all those medical uh, i get all those medical expenses make a file and then i proceed with the claim and then i get the claim amount this is just in case of reimbursement with that i want to thank you so much for attending our webinar i hope we really really helped you in understanding health insurance and medical insurance thank you thank you so much sushma it was really really nice and thank very you. informative i think i learned a lot today um and since we've recorded this webinar, webinar we shall be posting it on our youtube channel so that more, more people benefit from it uh, do we have any questions from the participants otherwise we'll close the webinar you can either unmute and ask or type in the chat box so saloni i wanted to ask you what did you feel that you learned new a lot of terms that i didn't really know before 
uh, also the difference between a mediclaim and a health insurance i didn't know that so i okay. learned that today so i think uh, that is what um, also about starting young that is something we did anyway i feel it's mm. very important that everybody starts at the earliest so that they have your medical history from before and then you get better uh, you know amounts later on as as you grow yes. older so yes they do there is a lot to i mean it's it's a good thing if people start making a habit of you know starting early for whether it's investing or whether it is taking medical insurance paying their taxes i think the earlier do you start the better it is <laughs> okay so uh, is there, are there any questions no i don't think there are any questions um okay. so we will close the webinar now and uh, once we have once we have the recording i think we'll post it on all the groups so that people can check it out as per their convenience okay. thank you sushma this was really nice thanks arjun thanks bye bye bye